Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Well, today I'm going to be looking at the uses for a hairdryer. No, I don't need a hairdryer. Actually, don't need a hairdryer at all. I mean, you can use it for all kinds of things. It has the advantage of being a handy thing for blowing crap off the vent. I don't use it for that. All it does is push it onto the floor and then I gotta sweep it up. Why do it twice? It also uh, heats. So it has two settings. It has off, well, it has three settings actually. It has off, high, and low. High, that's off, and that's low. Also has this nifty little button that turns on and off the heater. So you can blow cool air at yourself, or let go of the button and have heat. Must be some styling advantage to that. I don't use a hair dryer very often because, quite frankly, it gets dry at about the time I step out of the shower. So what am I doing with a hair dryer? Well, I'm going to show you. Some of you guys may remember this little thing. This is the plastic injection molding machine. And I heated the tube up with a propane torch and used this in a drill press to shove the plastic out of the barrel of it. It actually worked. This piston sucked. It leaked way too much past it. Mostly because I made it to fit the end of the pipe and the end of the pipe is rolled in. That's what happens when you thread with a power threader. It tends to take the first little bit of the pipe and collapse it. So I have to adjust that. And I need a better piston, and I need a frame to work it. And the other thing I need is a better way to heat it than using a propane torch. Propane torch was a lot of fiddling. It works. I was able to heat the barrel up just to the point where the material started flowing out of it and that was the perfect temperature for actually doing the injection. But trying to maintain the temperature in the barrel is a bit tough. So I thought, maybe I need to have some kind of uh, electronic device so that I can actually set a temperature and hold it there. So what's the first thing I need for that? Well, I need the heating element. And if you remember the coffee maker, taking the coffee maker apart, I found out that the heating element was a tube and the tube is designed to hold water, which works very well. The tube attached to a metal plate on the bottom of the coffee maker to keep the underside of the pot warm. So as soon as all the water boiled out of the tube, it still heated up that plate. And that was kind of cool, but the electronics on it were fried. This one is obviously working. So if I take this thing apart, what am I gonna find on the inside? Well, this one's definitely shorter. I don't know if it's any smaller in diameter. Yep, it is. Hmm. Is there some kind of a mechanism that holds this together? We may end up destroying this thing getting the element out. If so, so be it. Well, it's always nice to have a junker screwdriver laying around somewhere. And let's see which one of these is going to be the volunteer for disassembly. Oh, this one. Definitely a junker. It's so bad, <laughs> I don't even understand why I put it in the rack there, but I'm going to use it today. Oh, 
came apart. Oh, it has clickers on it. I see. It's got a little lip there. And a couple more lips over here. They caught a hold of the edges of this. And since I snapped off those lips, this wasn't designed to be disassembled. It was designed to be a one-time deal. Look at this. A heating element along with the electronic controls. Got a little bitty electric motor in there. And this nice set of electric coils. Now there's no resistor in it. Oh, wait a minute. This button clipped off. Ah! This is the spring that pushes this button back up. You push it down, and then this little spring pushed it back up. That lets you run the button this one for the cool operation. Now this little fan motor might actually be useful for something so I'm going to try and keep that as a piece. And this appears to be some kind of heat resistant material so I'm going to try and keep that because that would be ideal to be able to wrap that around that pipe as a standoff to hold the heating element away from the pipe. Really don't want to energize the pipe. Bad idea. Let's see. Checking out the circuitry, I've got a high and a low setting on it. So that means there must be something in here that either turns on or off one of the elements. Is there two elements in here? Is there actually two elements grouped together? Yes, there's a large element and a small element. Small element has a resistor on it. And the large element appears to be a straight through. Gets juice right from the switch. So I imagine it turns on and off one of the elements. And if I was really interested, I could do a whole investigation into this to see exactly what it did. But I'm not. So I'm going to leave these wires, because they're color-coded on the switch, just like that. And I know these two go to the motor. I don't need the motor on the heating elements. And there it goes. We're down to the part that I really wanted. There's a little thermal overload. So if it reaches the set temperature, that thermostat clicks open. Definitely want to keep this into the system if I can. But I am going to have to remove the heating elements, which means I'm going to be doing some disassembly. I want to remove these little rivets with as little damage as possible. I'm going to damage the rivets. There's nothing I can do about that. But I don't want to damage the wires that are attached to it. So I'm going to use the Dremel tool, the rotary cutter, to try and remove the rivets without creating any more damage than I need to. as a cutter.
it's a little diamond point and that diamond point I think is worn out. Try this one. There's the heating element freed up. It's just a coil spring made out of nichrome wire. Well, that got it. One heating element. I take off the other one with any luck. There, two heating elements removed intact. Now we'll go for the small one. Not because I think I need it, but because, you know, what the heck, you got one, why not keep it? Little rivet just dropped right off. That left this element free. Okay, we have the two standoffs salvaged. So now I have to separate these. Standoffs. They're gonna come in very handy when I wanna use these standoffs on the pipe. I'm going to be using an abrasive wheel to cut those uh, standoffs and I'm pretty sure they're some kind of temperature resistant material because they're right next to a really hot 
heating element. To avoid breathing in any dust from that thing, I'm going to put on my handy dandy 3M dust mask. Two standoffs. And there we have A complete set of four. Gonna shut off the camera for a little bit and let the air clear so I can take off my dust mask. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.